Hello, my name is David Rogers, and I've been raising long-tailed fowl since mid-2002. This is one of my birds here behind me. He's about an F3 in my generation. It goes rather slowly because each generation does have to be tested for feather growth so that you know which birds to use as breeders before you use them. That way you don't end up with accidents in your next generation that may not express the traits you're desiring. As you can see, he is perched at the top of this uh, wooden piece of furniture and his tail does go nearly to the floor. It lacks about five or six inches. His tail is currently about six foot five inches and still growing. All the feathers are still in blood feather. And you may notice that the saddle feathers aren't as long as they should be. They should be roughly one third to one half the length of the growing tail. You can see they do fall quite a bit short of that, but they are still in blood feather. The reason that they are so short currently is that they molted after he was used as a breeder a couple years ago. Breeding will often throw these fowl into a molt, even though they are regularly non-molting when housed in a solitary type pen. The last thing I want to do is imply that he is an Onagadori, and which he is not. He does lack certain key traits that prevent him from being classified as an Onagadori. One is, of course, he lacks the typical Onagadori crow. He has a regular rooster-type crow, and the Onagadori crow is a very specific crow, which it builds up in three waves, or three notes, each increasing in power and intensity until the end in which the crow ends in a deep inhale. The inhale is quite prominent. The entire crow lasts from about beginning to inhale roughly five to six seconds in a pure Onagadori. His crow is only about three to four seconds. So he's lacking that. He's also lacking the specific note tone. I don't think he'll actually crow for us right now on command. You may notice, if you look closely, that he does have hackle feather actually growing from the sides of the body near the thigh. This is a characteristic of the Anangadori. This body feathering is also very soft and wispy. The slightest breeze will actually cause it to move. You can see that actually here in the room in still air that some of the feathers are actually moving just from him moving around there on the perch. That's how wispy the feathering is. It's not anything like a silky type feathering where the barbs are actually unlinked. It is regular linked barbed feathering but it's just very soft and wispy as compared to other fowl. Even compared to a phoenix, his feather is much softer, and a phoenix would be almost hard feathered compared to his, even though it is generally regarded as a soft feathered fowl. As I back up and pan down, you will see that the tail does nearly go all the way to the floor. It literally keeps growing for years at a time, and as you'll see, these feathers only lack just a few inches from meeting the floor. His tail is currently roughly about six foot five. I would like to show just exactly what continues the growth on these feathers and why they do continue growing for so long. As you will see up next to the quilts to the near the body there, they actually are pink. And the pink is due to actually blood flowing through those feathers to nourish them. The blood supply ends at about right there. You can see it goes out a couple inches from the body and that keeps the blood feathers nourished and continues the feather growth over several years of time. They're much too long for him to reach to preen and oil on his own, so there must be special care taken and provided by the caregiver just to ensure that the feathers do remain in good condition. You have to condition them regularly to keep them in good shape. One way of keeping them in good condition is to just use some mineral oil on a lint-free cloth or a paper towel. What has to be done is you start near the top of the feather, fold the paper towel over so that the oil is in the middle, and run this down each feather. You don't want to actually saturate the feather or it will stick together. What you're doing is just actually gently coating the feather just to provide a little bit of moisture to keep it from drying out because if it dries out it will become brittle. Also what needs to be done is actually put a couple drops of oil right on the base of the Urcagio papula or the oil ducts. He, and I say ducts, plural, because he does have two oil ducts. In regards to regular fowl, they typically have only one oil duct, but he has two. It's a modification that produces more oil. It's a recessive gene. But even still with the double oil ducts, he still cannot produce enough oil for his entire body. You can actually put a little bit of oil on this and actually run it over the surface of the entire bird. 
if he appears to be a little bit dry. It's also beneficial to oil the legs, the comb, and the face just to prevent them from drying out. No matter what any breeder or salesman says, there are currently no known Onagadori in the U.S. For more information about non-molting long-tailed fowl, please visit my blog in the links below, or you may also visit the forum at onagadori.net, that is O-N-A-G-A-D-O-R-I dot net.